Recording in progress. Well, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Thank you for those gathering in person, braving the tumultuous wind and the storms going on outside. And coming on this, the first Sunday of Black History Month. And uh, Black History Month came about many years ago, first promoted by a man named Carter G. Woodson, uh, who was the second black man to get a PhD from Harvard, got his PhD in history, and was famous for cataloging the history of African Americans. And he saw the way that the sin of white supremacy and racism permeated all of America. And when we talk about racism and white supremacy, America's narrative has always been that white people are superior and black people and other people of color are inferior. And Carter G. Woodson saw that as a lie, and he wanted to promote black excellence and black history while it was actively being suppressed. And unfortunately, we see it today in the state of Florida and other places still actively trying to suppress the history of black excellence in America. And so Carter G. Woodson actually first promoted a black history week, and he chose February because it was the same week that we were celebrating Abraham Lincoln, and it was the same week that Frederick Douglass was born. And so he said, let's celebrate Abraham Lincoln, what he did, and let's celebrate Frederick <coughs> Douglass, and let's have a black history week. And then it became Black History Month, but that's the reason why it's the shortest month of the year, because it was when Abraham Lincoln and uh, Frederick Douglass were being honored and celebrated. But Carter G. Woodson was a historian and also a teacher, and the method of teaching, the fancy word is pedagogy. And uh, there's a recent book out by a, a historian at Harvard today called Fugitive Pedagogy. And it talks about the subversive teachings of Carter G. Woodson. And how not only was he promoting black excellence, he was also writing curriculum for teachers to teach. And in the segregated school system, uh, the school board was still all white. And so they determined and, and uh, set forth the curriculum that had to be taught in the black schools. And they, for the most part, wanted to teach black inferiority. And they just decided, well, these black kids, all they're ever going to be is domestic house workers or uh, lowly farmers or blue collar workers. So why bother even teaching them anything uh, about excellence and superiority? And Carter G. Woodson came through and said no and wrote a different curriculum. And because he was a historian, he was able to research all the ways that black people in America have been excellent and continue to be excellent. But he also highlighted that to be black in America what, under slavery meant you longed for freedom, therefore you longed to break the law. Your longing for freedom was to be a fugitive and to be subversive against the actual overt laws and also the subtlety of white supremacy in America. And he, he, in uh, this book by Jarvis Gibbons, here's the book, I brought it so you could see it, uh, on fugitive pedagogy, he talks about how uh, Carter G. Woodson cur curriculum would be taught in schools, but the teachers knew enough, and they taught their students, hey, if the superintendent comes around, we got to hide the book and act like we're talking about something completely different. And this book by Jarvis Gibbons talks about how that was constantly teaching the kids that to be black in America is to be set apart and to be excellent, but you're also subversive. And it was like the, teaching the kids, here's what the dominant culture wants you to know, but we're going to teach you something different, and it's going to be excellent, and uh, it will uplift you. And so as we celebrate Black History Month, it's also nice to celebrate people who aren't as dominant. You know, we'll hear about Martin Luther King Jr., we'll hear about Frederick Douglass, but it's also good to hear about Carter G. Woodson. And then those teachers that were very brave, 
using Carter Woodson's curriculum to teach black excellence in America. And just by teaching that was very, very, very subversive. So what, in some ways, does this have to do with Jesus or Christianity? <laughs> Uh, in the beloved community of God, that's what we call the kingdom of God, in the beloved community of God, all are welcomed and all are loved. And we are citizens of that beloved community. And as we try to lean into that beloved community, as we try to honor that citizenship in that beloved community, it's helpful to name the forces in the world around us that are pulling us away from living into that beloved community. So, for example, I think advertising is pretty horrible because it's constantly telling me, hey, your, your life will be better, people will love you, and things will go better for you if you buy this one product. And I'm like, no, I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm beloved by God no matter what products I purchase, no matter what kind of khakis I wear, uh, no matter what kind of car I drive. God loves me. And so I, I see advertising as a, as a thing trying to pull me away from leaning into my calling as a faithful follower of Jesus. And I also see the dominant strains in American life, the racism and white supremacy, telling me that some people are better and some people are inferior as pulling me away from leaning into my mission as a member and a citizen of the beloved community of God. So as we want to be people who know that we are beloved by God, and also people that see everyone we encounter as also beautifully and wonderfully made by God, we have to recognize the voices in our head, the voices outside, that tell us that some people are more beautifully and wonderfully made and some people are less beautifully and wonderfully made. And instead, we see everyone as beautiful children of God, worthy of love, worthy of excellence, worthy of our kindness and our grace, and also people that we long to invite into and joining us in that beloved community of God. And these forces are pernicious and constantly permeate in such subtle ways uh, that are saying some people are better and some people are worse. And it takes a lot of energy and effort to dismantle that. But here we are in Black History Month, which is kind of just the beginning. All Every month should also highlight the excellence of black people and all people around us until that equality is made a uh, reality. And I don't know if we've ever really seen that here in America, but that's why we lean into our calling and our citizenship as members of the beloved community of God. So happy Black History Month. Uh, unfortunately, we are, as Christians, subversive in America. And then we're constantly seeing ways that we act that's contrary and different to modern, dominant American society. And we also see that all people are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. And we do our best to make it so. Amen. Amen.